practice resurrection. It's a little bit intimidating, and it sounds both more difficult than and less fun than a Zumba class, doesn't it? Practice resurrection. How do you do that? Practice resurrection is actually a line from a Wendell Berry poem, that wonderful farmer and poet and theologian, among other things. In his poem, he counsels us to practice resurrection. He reminds us that resurrection is not meant to be a doctrine sealed up in our creed, but that it's meant to be a way of life. Today's scripture readings, from the reading in Acts to Psalm 23, to the letter from 1 John to the Gospel, offer us a million sparks that we could tend into a flame that would inspire us and teach us to practice resurrection. But I can focus on only one. And I've chosen Psalm 23 this morning. Beloved Psalm 23, wonderful, familiar, maybe too familiar, Psalm 23. If we could inhabit that psalm, if we could live in it and with it, even just for a moment, we would know what it's like to practice resurrection. We would know what it's like for Jesus to walk into the closed doors of our fearful hearts and say, peace be with you. And then to breathe his hot breath on us so that we can continue his work of melting hearts of stone and reviving dry bones. Practice resurrection. So I offer something a little bit unconventional this morning, a meditation on Psalm 23, maybe even almost a prayer experience with Psalm 23. Come with me into Psalm 23. And I'm going verse by verse, so you might want to look at it printed in your bulletin or turn to page 612 in your prayer book. We enter Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. From the start, we find ourselves not alone. Not left to fend for ourselves, but belonging to the Lord. Being under the care of one who is looking out for us whose very job it is to take care of us. Someone's in charge. Just for this moment, relinquish control to the creator of the universe who knows a thing or two. You are in good hands. And there is never just one sheep in a flock, is there? So for this moment, you wave goodbye to your rugged, hard-won individualism, and you look around and see other sheep. Because everything that is spoken to you in Psalm 23 is spoken to the others who are here and not here. If we have a shepherd, we have companions as well. As we live in this psalm, who we are is not as important as whose we are. We belong to the good shepherd, and we belong to one another. I shall not be in want. 
There is the famous response of John D. Rockefeller to the question, how much money is enough money? And he said, just a little bit more. But now in this moment, as you live in Psalm 23, you are not in want. You are not held in the clutches of wanting just a little bit more. We let go for now of wanting just a little bit more out of the people in our lives. Just a little bit more work done on the house, in the house, in the yard. Just a little bit more time. Just a little bit more appreciation. Just a little bit more energy or health or clarity or retirement security. In Psalm 23, we let go of needing, wanting just a little bit more for my child's college application, just a little bit more for my own resume. In these moments, we are not in want at all. We are not wanting what the advertisements tell us to want. We are not wanting what our ego is dying for us to get. We are not wanting what everybody else seems to be wanting when we live in Psalm 23. But we're resting in the provisions that God has brought us in safety to this new day. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. Today is our Sabbath. We are told that there are six other days for us to strive and toil and accomplish and produce and gather. But today we are commanded to rest. I believe Moses' people, freed from slavery in Egypt, didn't truly grasp their liberation until they received the Ten Commandments from God and found that one of them was to rest. It was not permission to take a day off. It was not an invitation to rest and renewal, but a commandment. To these former slaves, you shall not work. You are not a slave available 24-7 to Pharaoh any longer, the Lord said to the Hebrews. You belong to me now, and to prove it, to show you what kind of master I am, I command you not to work. One day out of seven, drop it. Drop your labor that produces something, your activities that feed the market. You must stop it one day out of seven and lie down in green pastures beside the beautiful waters that will refresh you. In this, you will know you are free, that you are not a slave, that you are human, made in God's image to delight in God's creation and to be that part of creation that says from the deepest part of you, thank you, thank you. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his